I always thought that if I ever left Miami, I'd be running for my life, not running towards a new one. Over the course of eight seasons, Dexter fans, and even Dexter himself, spent a lot of time thinking about how it would end. Nothing lasts forever. Eventually, most serial killers get caught. The Showtime series about a serial killer who only preys on other murderers posed some bold, bloody questions. Can we sympathize with a character who takes pleasure in murdering? Can we feel something for a man who feels nothing? Maybe if I don't blink, my eyes will tear up. And perhaps the biggest one of all, can he get away with it? I suddenly find myself weighing the benefits of electrocution versus lethal injection. This question was answered a few times over the course of the show, as Dexter's double life was discovered by various people, even those closest to him. Oh God. But as he repeatedly evaded being captured or killed over the years, the show always seemed to be building to a grand finale, one that would answer definitively whether Dexter would be punished or go scot-free and force viewers to confront how they feel about it. Sometimes I wonder what it would be like for everything inside me that's denied and unknown to be revealed. Instead, the show went out quietly and ambiguously. Dexter fakes his death and disappears into the woods, remaking himself as a tormented lumberjack, his secrets safe and his overall fate uncertain. The backlash was swift from those who felt it was a cop-out. I can't leave you like this. Some critics and now former fans even said the finale had retroactively spoiled their enjoyment of the show. I just want to say that they absolutely ruined the show for no freaking reason whatsoever. It's never easy to end a long-running series in a way that satisfies everyone, but Dexter's ending was uniquely reviled. So where did Dexter go so wrong? Where is the orderly, controlled, effective Dexter? How did I lose him? Here's our take on that controversial ending and how shows like Dexter set expectations that ultimately decide whether they will leave us feeling content or cold. I thought I was headed in the right direction. My dark passenger back behind the wheel. But if I was so sure I knew where I was going, how did I get so lost? You're watching The Take. Let us know your take. This video is brought to you by Brilliant, a problem-solving website and app with fun interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. Whether you're looking to brush up or learn something completely new, Brilliant has something for you. Click the link in the description below, brilliant.org slash the take, to sign up for a free account now. The first 200 people that go to the link will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Dexter premiered in 2006, near the dawn of TV's golden age of anti-heroes. I'm one of them. In their darkest dreams. Complex, morally gray characters like Tony Soprano, Vic Mackey, Don Draper, and Walter White allowed us to indulge vicariously in our most forbidden impulses and vengeful power fantasies. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. Leaving us both unnerved and entranced by their refusal to be constrained by laws and societal boundaries. We're in a situation where everybody involved knows the stakes. Dexter pushed this archetype to its ethical limit with a protagonist who wasn't just criminal or corrupt, but a remorseless serial killer. This is what I long for. This is what I need to... Whereas his fellow anti-heroes may see murder as a necessary means to an end. Option one is we take him alive. We feel free to consider option two. Dexter Morgan thrives on it. Blood. It helps me control the chaos. He's inhuman, almost alien. While Walter White and Tony Soprano at least profess love for their families. I can't tell you how proud I am of you. A real student at Casa Soprano. Dexter tells us he feels nothing. What was once moving, speaking, killing, and threatening becomes nothing but an empty vessel, which is not so different from how I've always felt. The only thing that keeps us from recoiling from Dexter completely is his clear, if twisted, code. Children, I could never do that, not like you. Why? I have standards. Dexter only kills other killers and one pedophile. A choir director who raped and murdered little boys. A psychiatrist 
who manipulated women into taking their own lives. To the viewer, this justifies Dexter's actions in a primal eye-for-an-eye sense, appealing to the part of us that takes satisfaction in seeing brutal justice exacted upon the deserving. I've watched 67 people die, and at the moment of truth I looked into their eyes, and they knew and I knew. They got what they deserved. From an extreme, consequentialist standpoint, Dexter's dark work could even be argued as morally reasonable. Removing these people from society will result in the loss of fewer innocent lives. The best deed I can do is rid the world of you. As many have pointed out, Dexter is an extreme version of dark vigilante heroes like Batman, both of them transformed by childhood traumas that then compel them into vengeance. Some experiences are so big they change your DNA. Dexter even fantasizes about being discovered and celebrated as a dark defender, ridding the streets of violent criminals. I never really got the whole superhero thing, but lately it does seem we have a lot in common. Tragic beginnings, secret identities, part human, part mutant. But unlike Bruce Wayne, Dexter Morgan doesn't do it for others. He does it for himself. This dark passenger. And when he's driving, I feel alive. In its very premise, Dexter asks its audience whether we can accept someone like this as a hero, even an anti-hero. Although Dexter claims to have a moral code, it's one he inherited secondhand. You don't have a code. Harry did, and he's been dead 10 years. Although he may deliver a form of justice, he's not motivated by it. Dexter is perhaps less Batman than Hannibal Lecter, a killer who kills instinctively and who feels entitled to decide who lives and who dies. Like Hannibal, Dexter has a perverse sense of civic duty. I've always enjoyed my work. It brings order to the chaos, fills me with civic pride. Whenever feasible, one should always try to eat the root. And because of this, both characters end up working on the side of the law, punishing those who step out of line. But if society drops the ball, then someone else has to pick up the slack. Ultimately, though, both men murder not out of a sense of empathy or righteousness, but out of a narcissistic need to exert control, to make their own world a little more orderly. My own small corner of the world will be a neater, happier place. Dexter challenges viewers to examine our own sense of morality, to ask whether we believe Dexter's code should absolve him and what our answer says about us. You don't ever have to apologize to me, Dexter. Not for who you are or anything you do. This question is key to the entire show, and it's one that we would naturally expect the finale to resolve for us, one way or another. Will Dexter be punished, or will he get away with it? And is that what we should be rooting for? It sounds like she got exactly what she had coming to her. Personally, I'd shake this guy's hand. You were meant to be happy, so you need to go fucking be happy. By not providing any definitive answers to the questions it's long set up, Dexter's finale avoids passing judgment on its protagonist, thus allowing the viewer to likewise sidestep any difficult introspection. Ultimately, though, the path to disappointment started long before those final shots of Dexter in exile. The problems with Dexter began as the show gradually retreated from its arresting central premise. Can we sympathize with a psychopath by coloring in his formerly blank emotional life? It's these rules that help define who we are, so when we break those rules, we risk losing ourselves and becoming something unknown. Dexter describes himself as completely devoid of feeling, even toward his adoptive sister, Deb. I don't have feelings about anything, but if I could have feelings at all, I'd have them for Deb. We're told that he maintains the illusion of relationships largely as a cover, but over the course of the series, Dexter is shown to develop real emotional attachment. So too are the relationships I cultivate. They're not just disguises anymore. I need them even if they make me vulnerable. His relationship with Rita becomes one of affection rather than just convenience, and he takes his duties as a husband seriously. The disappointing Rita makes me feel like the scum of the earth. He seems genuinely changed by becoming a father. I want to be there for him. And he develops romantic relationships with women that are based on honest mutual connection. In her eyes, I'm not a monster at all. While these developments probe at the existential question of whether Dexter can change his essence. And things. People. 
that never mattered before are suddenly starting to matter? They also result in a muddled character. Dexter claims to be unfeeling, but he can be happy or enraged. Today, I feel something real. Experience love, grief. That's the first human thing I've seen you do since she died, Dexter. And fatherly pride. I've never felt this. You've never had a son before. He even begins to believe that his ability to feel remorse separates him from true monsters like the Trinity Killer. If erring is human, then remorse must be too. Wait, does that make me human? Humanizing him certainly creates a more complex vision of Dexter, but it also waters down the most interesting aspect of his character. Not that murderers typically care whether their victims are innocent or not. So why is it eating at me? The very fact that Dexter is an unfeeling psychopath, not a killer with a heart of gold, is what initially sets him apart from the usual anti-hero and puts the show in uniquely dark territory. I'm a serial killer. We're used to empathizing with anti-heroes because at some level we can relate to the insecurities, desires, and regrets that drive them to commit their horrible deeds. I have spent my whole life scared. But asking us to empathize with a protagonist who lacks empathy is a much bolder statement, and it's one that, with each passing season, Dexter increasingly shied away from. Instead, the show began to suggest that Dexter was simply broken, and more importantly, capable of getting better. Maybe one day not so long from now. I'll be rid of the Dark Passenger. This was only reinforced by the plot, which often went to almost absurd lengths to protect him. Nearly every season sees someone closing in on Dexter, threatening to expose him. Sergeant Dokes, Rita's husband, Detective Quinn, Captain LaGuerta. She's got me penned in like a caged animal. And an animal is never more dangerous than when it's backed into a corner. Time and again, the series seems to be building to a point where Dexter will be pushed to abandon his code and kill an innocent just to protect himself, forcing the audience to confront what it means to root for him. That's the key, right? Not to care about anyone or anything. I care. No, it was a compliment. I don't care either. But each time, at the last minute, the show gives Dexter an ethical escape hatch. Rita's husband dies in prison. Lila kills Dokes. Deb kills LaGuerta. Who is Deb now? Who am I? Is this a new beginning? Or the beginning of the end? Dexter avoids being morally compromised, the viewer avoids discomfort, and the show goes safely on. A better person would feel bad about LaGuerta's death. But the truth is, it solved all my problems. All our anti-heroes eventually reach some kind of breaking point. Even stories that leave us with ambiguity about their characters' fates will force us to reckon with the damage they've caused and the toll it's taken on the protagonist. Are you sure this is where you want to be? These shows don't always end in a moral absolute, but their endpoints confirm the true consequences of the anti-hero's journey. Do you feel like Frankenstein? A thing? Lacking humanity? Lacking human feelings? For Dexter, Rita's murder at the hands of the Trinity Killer initially seemed to be that breaking point. She died because of you. In this, Dexter's fate seemed to mirror that of his fellow anti-heroes, whose selfish drive for power ends up hurting the ones they love most, leaving them sad and alone. But then, Rita's death is quickly swept under the rug, seemingly leaving no long-term effect on Dexter. If anything, it restores him. It said there are seven stages of grief. I suppose killing someone with my bare hands in a men's room was my way of working through the anger stage. Dexter even moves back into his old apartment, ready to resume his orderly, uncomplicated life as a killer. I'm a very neat monster. Like Dexter, the show avoids reckoning with the consequences of his actions, and the best illustration of this attitude is Deb. Throughout the show, Deb is the closest to Dexter, and the one he's most in fear of hurting. I'm very... She's also essentially the series' second lead character. Yeah, yeah, I'm a hero. F you very much. <laughs> In almost every respect, Deb is made out to be the other side of Dexter's coin, raised by the same flawed father, cursed with many of the same demons, but more clearly and conventionally good. You're a good person. 
a lot better than most. <laughs> it seems almost inevitable that Deb will be the one who's forced to bring Dexter to justice, or that Dexter will be forced to kill her. In fact, the entire show seems to be leading to their inevitable standoff. When Deb finally discovers Dexter's secret in Season 7, we seem to have reached that impasse this has all been leading towards. Are you a serial killer? But even this consequence is quickly averted. Ultimately, like the show itself, Deb simply loves Dexter too much to punish him. She chooses to not think too deeply about the thornier ethical questions. I know you're not gonna stop. <sighs> but I don't want to know about it." By the end of the season, her corruption is so complete, she's even become a killer herself. It's the only solution, the only way to end this. No, 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 I can't let you go through with this! And while Deb's guilt and self-destructive spiral threatens consequences for Dexter, again their slate is wiped clean. We both start over. In their final conversation, Deb even absolves Dexter from feeling guilty, not just about her, but about everything. I don't want you to feel guilty about this. I don't want you to feel guilty about anything, you hear me? When Dexter kills Deb, it's not the long-awaited climax to their epic moral battle. It's just Dexter tidying up again, imposing his own order, and killing Deb on his terms. Dexter faces a separate dilemma when it comes to Hannah and Harrison, with whom he's preparing to flee the country and start a new life. And now what's in focus is my future. Right brighter than it's ever been. Although the show sidesteps any moral reckoning with Deb, here it seems the show could still answer another central question. Is Dexter just an inveterate killer, or can love redeem him and turn him into something more? I said I don't want to lose you again. But as it turns out, the show doesn't have the answers here either. Dexter does kill again. No, I'm here to kill you with that pen. And again, he's absolved by those who love him. It's obviously self-defense. He also decides not to join his family, reasoning that this will keep them safe. I destroy everyone I love, and I can't let that happen to Hannah, to Harrison. I have to protect them from me. He then sails his boat into a hurricane, and at first this seems to be a final, noble sacrifice, but then he re-emerges. Dexter is not redeemed. He's not brought to justice, nor does he fully get away with it. Instead, he's left in a sort of purgatory. In the end, we don't know exactly what Dexter is feeling, or how we're supposed to feel about him. Good morning, Miami. Hurricane Laura has passed and everything is going back to normal. In defending the finale to Entertainment Weekly, Dexter's executive producer Sarah Colton argues that his punishment is banishment, that because what Dexter really wanted all along was human connection, exile would be his most fitting retribution. For so long, all I wanted was to be like other people, to feel what they felt. But now that I do, I just want it to stop. But this kind of vague emotional punishment reduces the series' initial promise of big moral consequences like deliverance or damnation to the much smaller payoff of telling us whether Dexter can connect with people. I know I led you to believe I'm a human being, but I'm not. Even as Dexter became gradually more human as the seasons wore on, it still revolved around its central ethical dilemma. Should Dexter get away with murder just because actually he's a pretty decent guy? I can't believe I found the one good, truly decent man left on the planet. This is a big question that demands an equally big answer. Instead, the show seemed to reply, maybe, but only a little. I know how much you hate it when people get away with murder. Everyone, that is, except for you. The disappointment over Dexter's finale is illustrative, showing how our own connections to a TV show can actually change it, occasionally for the worse. As Dexter producer John Goldwyn later revealed to Vulture, Showtime had just one edict for its finale. Just to be clear, he's going to live. Dexter's success meant the network wasn't willing to risk killing him off, even if that's exactly what original showrunner Clyde Phillips had in mind. Killing Dexter might make narrative sense, but it doesn't make for good business. Not when there are potential sequels, spin-offs, and reboots to be had. That instinct is understandable. Dexter was one of TV's most uniquely intriguing protagonists, and one of its most popular. But like Dexter himself, the show tried so hard to connect with people, it ended up no longer sure what it was. Somewhere along the line, the fake life that we created as a cover for me to kill became real. Instead of taking us into the darkest depths of our own humanity, Dexter just wound up in the middle of nowhere. Am I evil? 
Am I good? I don't have the answers. Does anyone? If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notified about all our new videos. This video is brought to you by Brilliant, a problem-solving website and app that offers math and science courses developed by award-winning professionals from MIT, Microsoft, and Google. Have you ever wondered what a Bitcoin is or how it works? Why not check out Brilliant's brand new course on cryptocurrency? You'll learn about blockchains, explore the mechanics of maintaining and securing a cryptocurrency, and will complete the course fully equipped to make up your own mind about this modern phenomenon. Brilliant also has daily challenges featuring fun games and examples of math and science problems we face in real life. All you have to do is click the link in the description below, brilliant.org slash the take, to sign up for free. And if you're one of the first 200 people to click the link, you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription.